Hi guys, it's Kelly here and I'm back with another video for Honeybee Stamps. Today we're going to be using lots of products. Some of them I showed you and I didn't end up using them um, just because I wasn't really sure how the whole um, card design was going to come together. Uh, but all of them are things that I think I've used before in the past. So the main focal points are going to be images from Simply Stated, which is from the new release. And then you guys know I love mixing my new with my old. And so the older set I'm using is called Love is in the Air. And it is hands down one of my favorite sets Honey Bee has ever released. So what we're going to be doing today is we're going to be embossing, dry embossing with stencils. And if you have found this video because you are here specifically looking for that, you're going to want to jump to around the 12-ish minute mark um, to see that. But because I wasn't sure about how my designs were going to come together, I have to do the coloring first so I know what my color scheme is, so I know which cards to, like, which ones to do the embossing on. <laughs> So here I am stamping down the images. I am using our Intense Black ink from Honeybee, and this is safe for alcohol markers, which is what I am going to be using today to color. And then um, I stamped four, like four of each, so four flowers, four birds. Uh, I ended up with three cards. I probably could have changed up the designs a little bit and done four cards, but I liked the one... Um, that had two flowers and two birds so well that I wasn't willing to change it. <laughs> um, so here, like I said, just finishing up the stamping, this is all of what we're working with. I will show you the coloring of each thing, but it is a little bit more sped up than usual. Uh, you may also notice that I am mixing in my sketch markers with my Copics. When I got these, one of the things that I told you guys was that I super loved the pink combination and it was so much easier to use than the Copic pink combination that I have. Um, and that was not a lie. Like when I knew I was going to do um, like more of a vivid hot pink, I, even though I had already put them away, like I went back to where they were, dug them out, um, you know, picked out the colors that I wanted to use because I do think that this pink combination is much easier to use. Now, because I only have 48 of those markers, I do have to supplement with my Coca Cope X for my lightest color and my darkest color, but that's fine because they work together. They work well together. Um, so yeah, anywho, um, what you see me doing here, I'm not sure what these flowers are. I'm if I had to hazard a guess, I would think they would be carnations. Um, and so there's just kind of a lot of little ruffles and folds and stuff. And that is why I chose to start with my darkest color, just so I could put a very minimal amount of my darkest color down without oversaturating my paper and then having my color bleed out where I didn't want to. Um, you just want to make sure as you're going through and adding each consecutive layer of color that you are still reserving some white for your lightest color. In things like this that have a lot of ruffles and a lot of layers, um, the deepest, darkest shadows and those bright highlights are going to be what separates everything and gives you a ton of dimension versus having it be very flat um, because there isn't enough contrast. You, the, the contrast is required from lightest to darkest in order to... Um, create that dimension so that it looks like there's peaks and valleys, highs and lows, um, all of that jazz. So uh, I really do like this pink. I mean, I'm a big fan, big fan of the pink combination. Um, so here you can see when we're going in with our lightest color and filling in those white areas, everything's just kind of coming together and you can really start to see like the different uh, levels of color and how those it gives the appearance of those petals being layered on top of one another, which is ultimately, in my style of coloring, the goal. So then from there, I use the same pink combination to do the berries in the other bunch. I'm going to be honest, I have not seen this set used a lot um, since its release, and I'm kind of surprised because it was one of the first ones in the release that I was totally drawn to. Um, I thought that they were super cute, and I love the sentiments that are included. They also include, I think we talked about this with a little note, uh, which was another set. It in, The dies include a 3D banner, so you can do the stamped one and then die cut out the stamped one, or you can 
die cut out a 3D banner and use that, which is the same size as the one in the stamp set. I think that that's a wonderful little add-on in the dies. But anywho, the sentiments, there's like a happy anniversary. There's Happy birthday is the one that I used. Um, there is like a Mr. and Mrs. So you could use these bouquet for wedding cards. There's just all kinds of super good sentiments. Let me see what else is in here. Congratulations, happy anniversary. Um, and then just general like missing you. Hello, my friend. There's just a ton. So I, I wasn't, I'm not really sure why I'm not seeing it a lot more because um, I, I am a big fan of them. But anyway, um, so usually you guys know we do like a lot of talking about the card construction and then we do story time but because my coloring is at the beginning of the video we're gonna do story time a little bit earlier than normal and so one of the things that i i wanted to talk to you about is i've had a couple of conversations recently with people who are not even like they're not even in the same field like they're they're my friends but they're my friends that I met in very different ways that don't know each other and in having um conversations with them one of them was a girl that I work with who is a dispatcher she had called me about something from work and she said what are you doing and I said I'm making a card <laughs> and she's like of course you are because you're like the most creative person that I know which I'm super jealous about and I said um, thank you, but there's no reason for you to be jealous. And she was like, no, I am just not crafty. Like, I wish I was, but I'm just not crafty. And I said, to be fair, all you need to be creative is the desire to create. And then she said, I really think that it was kind of ruined for me by my elementary school art teacher. And I was like, really? And she was like, yeah, like she just would, was super critical of the things that I did. Um, and elementary school, okay, so we're talking between five and 12 years old, a, like a, ch a literal child. And um, she was like, she was just super critical of all the things that I did. And then, you know, I would try something and she never had anything nice to say about it. And then I was, you know, making something else. And she said, you know, maybe this just isn't for you. And I was like, well, okay then. And then a different friend that I was talking to was telling me about how her, like, and my kid is the same way. I, I don't know if it's, it was that way where you went, but like they have specials once a week. So each week um, they have a different special, whether that's like gym or music or art or, you know, whatever. And um, so she told me, she, she said um, that, again, like we're having now, she's a friend that I know from the card making community and her experience was, um, very similar to my other friends. And she said, yeah, she was like, I just, you know, sometimes I don't know really if my stuff is all, you know, that good or it kind of stifles me creatively because, um, you know, I had this art teacher who was awful and she was mean and she was super critical. And, um, she was like, I, you know, I just remember like every time it was that week time of the week for specials that we had to go to art, like I would just cry and cry because I didn't want to go, um, to her class because she was so mean about the things that I created. This is absolutely abhorrent to me. Um, my situation was not, uh, in art. I've shared this with you guys before. My situation was in gym and that is how I basically never played organized sports again because I had a gym teacher that just absolutely humiliated me in front of my entire class to the point where I was just standing there crying and she was screaming at me. Now, with all of this said, I am a huge supporter of teachers. Teachers have one of the most challenging jobs that they are not at all compensated for. But the reason that their jobs are so important is because they are literally shaping the lives of our children. And that means the good, the bad, and the ugly. So these teachers who maybe, maybe it was a bad day. Maybe they weren't all completely horrible teachers. We don't know because we only have like these, these three experiences that we're, that we're talking about. Um, or maybe it's not a teacher who told you that you couldn't create. Maybe it was a parent or a grandparent, a sibling. Um, 
you know, somebody in your life that you really valued their opinion and then they just kind of wore you down and told you what you were making wasn't good enough or it wasn't for you or other people did better or whatever it was. That is not true. That is not true. Everybody creates artwork differently. Everybody creates things that bring them joy in different ways. Your cards aren't going to look like mine, and they shouldn't because we are not the same person. Your Maybe your medium is different. Maybe you really love watercolor. Maybe you really love sculpture or pottery or sewing. Whatever, whatever it is, whatever your creative outlet is, please, 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 don't let somebody steal your joy of creating. And maybe you're a person like my friend from Dispatch who super enjoys watching other people create art because she wishes that she could do that, but she never actually tries herself. Please try. Please do it for your for yourself. You don't have to show it to anybody. You don't have to, you know, put it out there for the world to see, but it is... It is feeding your soul to create these things if God has given you a desire to create, to be a maker, to use the gifts that he gave you. Please don't let somebody else steal that from you because I promise you, even though even though you think yours doesn't look as good as everybody else's or mine isn't like hers or I promise you it is beautiful, even if it is beautiful in a different way. So please don't let people in your life just rob you of that. Don't give them that much power in your life. Please go make something that will feed your soul. Now, with that said, all of our coloring is done. We're going to move on to the die cutting and the actual technique with the stencils. So here is the sandwich I have. I'm using a, a Spellbinders Platinum 6. I have the base plate. I have an embossing mat. Um, I do have the universal plate system, but you don't need it. So you need the embossing mat. Here I have uh, my cardstock. I've spritzed the back of the like the back of it with water. Not super heavy, but just light enough to make it damp. I'm going to put my stencil on top of that, and then on top of all of this, I'm going to use the adapter plate. Then a shim. Everybody is different. Everybody's machines is different. So you may or may not need the shim. Also, if you have the original embossing plate, I am pretty sure it is the same as the adapter plate. Um, so you would be able to kind of swap that out in your sandwich. But then I ran it through four times. So I went through once, back out, through once, and then back out. And every single time, and I tried with a bunch of different kinds of cardstocks, I got beautiful results. So this is the, um, I think it's Pretty Petals uh, stencil from Honeybee. And the next one I'm going to do, which honestly I got the best results from. And I'm going to be honest, I don't know if it is because it was a thicker cardstock uh, because it was. This one's 110. Um, and I actually think the pink one is 110 too. So this one is Gina K. The pink one is Hero Arts. Um, or if it is because it's a darker colored cardstock. I'm not entirely sure why, which, like, which reason that it is better, but it is good. Like, it is so good. And this is such, like, especially with, like, embossing folders coming back in style. Now, this is not in any way, shape, or form comparative to a 3D embossing in folder. But to a 2D, yeah. Yeah, I think it is. Um, and they're about the same price point. But if you have a stencil and you're like, wow, I really like this and I would like to use this textured, but I don't want to use my pastes or, you know, be messy about it. I just want something nice, easy, and simple that's going to give me some texture. Ladies and gentlemen, this will do it. So this one is just my regular Nina 80 pound. And again, I got great results with that. I had no issue with the pattern showing up, with it being raised, with being able to see it in my uh, card design. And this is the new um, Damask or Damask, however you pronounce it, um, stencil that came out and just totally love them because Sometimes texture can play a really important role in our card making design. Here I'm just using my uh, Bitty Buzz Cutter from Honeybee to cut out all of my colored images. That's what I'm doing here and I'm just going to run them all through and then um, 
I did go and look. Honeybee released a, they're called Opul, is it Opulent? I gotta look, hold on. Yeah, Opulent Layering Frames, and I had pulled that out along with the Vintage Layering, and I'm going to be honest, I ended up just using the Vintage Layering dies um, that just seemed to kind of go with the look that I was going for a little bit better. But so I did all of that, and then here I am going to stamp down my sentiments um, and heat emboss them. I'm going to stamp them in white pigment ink um, and heat emboss them with white detail embossing powder. So anyway... Um, what was I saying? I go, I was on a roll and then we lost it. What was it? Oh, the texture. So embossing folders are coming back in, um, but creating texture on our card has always been important because it can take a design that is very simple and just kind of bump it up a notch because it has that extra um, visual weight with the like texture that you've created but also it's something that when you hold you give your card to your recipient and they hold it they can feel it um which also just you know gives it a little a little extra something something which i think um can really just bring up a simple card design there is nothing that is super fantastic about any of my card designs here um I think that they're good i don't know that they're great but because of that added texture it makes them more interesting here, I'm using my uh, Sweet Petunia sticky mat because I did not stamp my sentiment before I die cut my uh, floral bouquet out, which I would normally do, but because I wasn't sure what I was doing, um, I didn't do it. So I just used my sticky mat to hold it in place and stamp down my happy birthday, and then we're going to get on to the building. I did all of these as almost completely flat designs. I did not add any um, like foam adhesive or craft foam. I think a lot of them would look really super pretty with that, um, you know, with kind of um, adding that little bit of dimension and, and creating um, actual layers. But I just kept them super simple and I'm not mad about it. Sometimes... Um, Sometimes that's okay. It doesn't always have to be like, you know, six different layers. I was really happy with the way that they came out. So this one, obviously, you could just do like this. You don't even need to put the bird in there. Um, but I think the bird gives it a little extra something. You know, this little tiny little blue bird who's so adorable. Um, if you are not familiar with the Love is in the Air set, I would highly recommend that you check it out because it's got a cute little um, birdhouse in it and flowers. It's just one of my favorites that they've ever done. I just think it's so good. So for the first one, we die cut the, like I took my um, layering die directly to my embossing background. Um, for this one, I actually have two of the embossing, um, the, the stencil embossed backgrounds. I have the lattice, the garden lattice in the background, but then this white one also is the middle of my um, damask. Uh, because I did that one on white and I cut it out <laughs> and so I just used it so I this one actually has kind of like texture on texture and because on the like they're different one's more of like I guess maybe more of a floral or a scroll and one is very geometric they don't clash they work really nicely together and um, I do think kind of like that bold black sentiment was the way to go to be quite honest, these I started making these three days ago, and they sat on my desk, and I would walk by, and I would look at them, and then I would come back, and I would play, and I would walk away, and the reason was is because I couldn't figure out what I wanted to do with the sentiments. I had the layouts for the cards like days ago, but I just couldn't figure out how to work the sentiments in there. For this one, this is the one that's got a lot going on, but it's probably my favorite also because I love a clean white card. Um, I trimmed off the stems and the banners. I am going to switch up. This is just another, you know, way to get a little bit more out of your stamp set for that simply, simply stated uh, with the floral bouquets. 
So I'm going to have them kind of peeking out from inside this die. This is the one I think I struggled the most with not adding dimension to. I really kind of wanted to pop up this frame, uh, but I resisted. I resisted the urge and everything is flat. <laughs> so here what I'm doing is I laid my flowers in place and then I put a little bit of adhesive onto the back of um, the embossed piece just so that I could pick them up and then glue them down as one whole piece without having to worry about my flowers kind of moving around in places that I didn't want to. They were already secured where they were going to go. So I'm going to glue that down flat. Again, I don't I love the addition of the birds, but even if you didn't want to add any birds, you could put a sentiment in the middle of this and it would still be a pretty elegant card. So now I've got a bird in the top left, in the bottom right, and then the sentiment I will put in the middle. I just used two of the labels. This is from the, is it just called Big? It might just be the Big Birthday Wishes. Um, and so I just use two of them. I think my problem was I really wanted to use like the bigger die cuts, but the designs that I had put together really didn't support a large sentiment. And at some point I just had to accept that um, and just, you know, use those sentiments on another card at another time, which is uh, totally okay. So now those are adhered down and then I will be adding these flat as well into the center and it'll say sending you birthday wishes. The other set that I showed you in the beginning, which is like you'll never see me use it because it's for the inside of the card, but it is such an excellent one. It's like so, so good is, um, what is this? Uh, inside birthday. I thought it was something simple. And these are just all of the things that like, everybody's like, what do you put on the inside of the card? These, that's what you put on the inside of the card. Wherever the year ahead takes you, I hope it's happy. Thinking of you on your birthday and wishing you everything happy. Your birthday is the perfect opportunity to remind you of a wonderful person you are. Like, these are so good. You just stamp them on the inside, sign your name, and you're done. Like, it's it's a complete card. So for these, I added some shimmer, and now I'm going in with a white gel pen and adding some highlights. I did want to add a couple of little gemstones. Some of the designs probably didn't need it per se, but I mean, who am I to deny a card some shine, honestly? Um, so the two that I used, um, the Honeybee is the best gem stickers. I literally said that on somebody's video earlier today. Uh, but I used Bee Bliss and Rainbow Birthday, and they were perfect to add a little bit of shine. And then that is it. That is the whole whole video. I hope that this technique will help you kind of stretch your supplies and get more out of what you have, different looks, all that jazz. I hope you learned a little something. Thank you so much for joining me and I will catch you on the next video. Bye.